Our software layer abstracts all available hardware into a single virtual device and then applies a variety of techniques to speed up your application. So how do you use Bitfusion? Here is one of our customers, Boris, who has developed an amazing application for the pharmaceutical industry, which requires high compute, but helps keep dangerous drug combinations off the market. His software required supercomputers with hundreds of nodes, costing millions of dollars, making it impossible for him to commercialize his application. Bitfusion delivered all that power in a single server that's right sitting behind the desk. Let me show you a demo. Here is Boris's application running on a normal CPU. As you can see, it's running very slow. So what do you do to speed up this application? Hire an expert team, spend months of development, none of these. You just simply turn on Bitfusion and run the application, as you see on the right. The immediate result is a many-fold increase in speed up. But we can do even more. What do we do for the slow application? Let's turn on Bitfusion while the application is running. No code changes. The application became instantly fast. This means Boris can now take his software to market, potentially saving thousands of lives. To Boris, Bitfusion literally represents the difference between having and not having a business. How about a completely different application? Face detection. Useful for surveillance, but also useful in locating family members during disaster relief scenarios. Here we are showing a HD video and we are doing face detection on multiple faces. As you can see, it's extremely slow. Now let's turn on Bitfusion. Again, while the application is running, no user code changes. There's an immense increase in speed up, and now real time face detection is possible. We have already shown success. Can you switch to the slides? We have already shown success in speeding up applications in scientific computing, bioinformatics, data analytics, by an order of magnitude, as you can see behind me. And we already have early adopters in all of these areas. We want to take it even further to provide easy access to supercomputing in reality. Towards that, this week, through our partnership with Rackspace, the number one managed cloud hosting provider, we are providing easy on-demand access to the most powerful hardware accelerators through our super cloud. You don't have to write any code, and you don't even have to buy any hardware. AWS made it easy for everyone to access general compute. We make it easy for everyone to access supercomputing. We are Bitfusion, and we are bringing supercomputing for the masses. Sign up for early access at bitfusion.io. All right. Great job. Give it up. Yeah. Judges. So you mentioned a few times about no code changes. Uh, is that the primary innovation that you have, basically taking someone who wrote some software that's used for serial computing and then putting it in parallel computing mode, is that the main change? Or is there a technology change beyond that, beyond the software layer? And, and then can you explain the hardware layer innovation that you have against all the other people who are in this space trying to sort of use GPUs to sort of accelerate uh, compute? Uh, so, by the way, we do use GPUs as well as uh, CPUs and FPGAs. Okay. Uh, we use uh, some of the more advanced instructions that people may not be aware of on even CPUs. Uh, but to answer your question, there are three fundamental innovations. Number one is an, a hardware abstraction layer that makes all of your hardware devices look at one accelerator. It does automated uh, arbitration and load balancing. And the second innovation is collating and combining and developing our own a set of software accelerated libraries. In fact, we want to build the largest set of software accelerated libraries out there. 
and also use what's out there right now. Third, um, we have a set of dynamic software optimization techniques in our R&D pipeline, uh, things that uh, automatically uh, re-optimize, recompile, um, even do uh, source manipulation at the compiler level. And that, and, and those technologies, we can actually uh, uh, cover applications that are not obviously uh, acceleratable. So science and engineering, or science and engineering, uh, you know, visualization, uh, machine learning, those are the things that are commonly, uh, you know, accelerated. But what about the web apps? What about the, uh, the databases? Uh, what about people using Hadoop and, and Spark? We think we can um, even address those customers with some of these other techniques. And uh, to, add to add to what he was saying, essentially, you know, think of this as a container technology where as you move an application from a CPU uh, to a hardware accelerator like an FPGA, the application automatically morphs to the device. So our thing is not just portable, but it's performance portable. And, so. and that basically makes a big difference when compared to some of the other solutions, like some people that are on the GPU side, for example, they write their libraries to be only specific for their own single accelerator, right? What we're trying to do is to ensure that the way our libraries are written and then utilized is that you can offload on any available hardware that you may have in that system. You sort of spoke of a world where it's sort of supercomputer and individual processors, and of course there's plenty of people solving very hard scientific problems using very available techniques like MapReduce and other things that let you take available of large-scale distributed compute resources with relatively straightforward coding techniques. So can you just sort of speak to that? Because those are technologies which allow you to just get the benefit of Moore's laws. You get you know, as many processes as you need. Those processors get faster without you having to do anything. So there's always a tension between that and then highly specialized de compute devices which you're still building here. So there's two answers to that question. Number one, we allow you to take a um, more advantage of your existing infrastructure. So whatever you're doing now, you may be able to do that twice as fast or four times faster. In fact, we have an Amazon AMI instance that runs R that's sometimes two to four times faster depending on, on the workload. So that's one. Secondly, the conventional wisdom is to scale out. More performance means more nodes, but it also means more complexity. It also means a whole bunch of orchestration. It also means um, you know, worrying about I.O. and where compute is and where server is. It adds complexity to the equation. It adds, it adds uh, DevOps to the equation. It adds you know, thinking about performance in sort of uh, irregular ways. We believe that instead of scale out as the first gut reaction, do scale up which is to pack as much horsepower into one node as possible, simplifying and actually improving performance along the way. As you scale up, you, you lose efficiency uh, per node as you go up. There's no such thing as linear efficiency. And so we believe that uh, the, the solution, or a better solution, is to scale up first before you scale out. And uh, to add to what you said, you know, if you, look at, if you look at the power consumption on a single rack, it's about 8 kilowatts. And you can't just keep adding more and more nodes in a single rack. So with hardware accelerators like FPGAs, which only consume 25 watts, you know, compared to a CPU, which is about 80 watts, or a GPU, which is about you know, 140, sometimes even 200 watts, you can now pack a lot of these things in a single box and do a lot of computations. And that's what we call, about, call it a supercomputing in a box. Yes, and uh, since you were referring to uh, Moore's law, right, um, in the end, the CPU is a general compute device. Uh, when we offload something to hardware specific that does the job that it's supposed to be doing, it is going to be more efficient. Uh, ideally, you would want to build an ASICS chip for a specific application every single time, but that's just not feasible because it takes a long time and it's cost prohibitive. So when you can do it something with a chip that can be reconfigured on the fly to do the computation and you need most right there and then, that's what gives you the advantage. And these chips have been around. I mean, FPGAs have been around for the last you know, 20 years, but it's become a, a lost art because it's really hard to use. You need special hardware knowledge. You need to write it in Verilog, VHGL, and you know, uh, advanced C. What we want to do is we want to basically expose that to you know, normal people so normal people can actually take advantage of those by just migrating their application from a regular CPU to these exotic devices. How do you explain to normal people what this is? <laughs> I, have, I have real questions, but that's actually a question. What's your customer acquisition stat strategy? Who are your current customers, and how do they explain what this is to their friends? So this, this is more speed. This is doing what you do faster. This means 
If you're discovering drugs, you'll do that faster. Time, uh, you know, every iteration is going to be a lot quicker. Time to market is quicker. Developing your drugs, developing whatever product you have, simulating, you know, doing computational fluid dynamics is faster. That's real money. That's actually allowing people to do more powerful things a lot faster. Speed matters. And that's what Bitfusion is all about. In fact, um, we believe in the, in the conventional wisdom is, hey, I'm going to buy really expensive hardware, and I'm going to pay a whole bunch of consultants to take my application and optimize it. We're taking from the other approach. We actually emphasize zero, zero friction. We emphasize that you can take your application, move it to a hardware accelerator, and bam, you just, you just get more speed. That's our emphasis. And so when we acquire customers, you can try before you buy. Take your existing application, run an, uh, on a Bitfusion-enabled appliance, and see the benefit for yourself. As we enable more and more libraries, as we enable more and more applications, we'll be able to deploy that to more, more people. In fact, um, that's what people ask for when, when we have our customers is, hey, can I try it? So you're, well, you're targeting mostly Fortune 500 CIOs, or who are you going to? So the mid-market, right? Mid-market is, you know, is, is our customer base. And the way we are looking at it, we have three different you know, uh, options for people trying it. One is basically a software layer that people can install in their existing CPUs to get speed up you know, on a CPU, because even in a CPU, you can actually potentially give a lot of speed up by exposing fine-grained parallelism. It's like Microsoft operating system you install. The second thing is an appliance with hardware accelerators in the appliance and a software layer on top of it. Again, the same application can run on this appliance as well. It is kind of like buying a PC with an operating system on it. The third one that we just announced is basically a super cloud. Essentially, it's like AWS, right? So hardware accelerators on steroid on demand. And um, that is when the kind of like try before you buy comes in because some people might not have that exotic hardware in their existing data centers or you might not have it in the public clouds, but now they can log in and they can run their applications, they can try it and then decide whether they want to stay uh, with, uh, with our cloud offering or maybe they're better off going and buying an actual appliance that has these accelerators. But in the clouds, um, you know, which kinds of customers who, because it's too costly for them today to have access to that kind of technology, which which kinds of customers will um, be coming into your markets and have access and what kind of products, what kind of um, layer, the next layer of customers uh, will be enabled by this? So, you know, to start with, right, um, startups, uh, you know, young companies in the biotech, biotech field, pharma field, who's trying to compete with the Merck and the Pfizer's of the world. Uh, who don't have money to basically, you know, buy these ex exotic hardware and who don't have the R&D to spend on them, they generally want to just try it and use it. And, you know, just like whoever is using AWS, uh, generally the startups and the young companies, they are the guys who will be trying on this, uh, you know, hardware accelerated cloud. And just to add a little bit of color to that, we've talked to a lot of researchers that literally wait, you know, three days before their experiment ends. You just, to, just imagine that, how much pain that is. You run an experiment, after three days, it's complete. And who knows what happens to the machine, and sometimes you even figure out, that you can't even remember why you ran the experiment in the first place. By making that close to real time, the whole way that you interact with analysis is completely different. It revolutionizes the way that you do business. What is your pricing model? Okay, uh, so the pricing model depends uh, on the solution that we're selling people, right? So, for example, on the cloud offering and uh, data, uh, data center offering where we just deploy um, the software layer itself, uh, the pricing model is a simple utility model where you just pre uh, pay per meter use, right? Now, on the appliance model, uh, we basically take a cut of the appliance sale, and then uh, at the same time, we do a yearly license or monthly license that people want for the software that's also based on the sale price of the actual appliance, right? Uh, and then finally, in our super cloud offering, uh, it's essentially the same as an AWS pricing model. So unfortunately, we're out of time. You guys did a great job. It was bitfusion.io. Thank you very much.